Welcome into the Chiefs Report. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Today's show is presented by Aura, an all-in-one digital safety and security provider. You don't want to get hacked. Aura is going to protect you from doing so. Get started today with a 14-day free trial. Aura.com slash chat sports. That is Aura.com slash chat sports. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope you guys are gearing up for what should be a good weekend. We'll get you caught up on the latest news and rumors here before that gets started for you guys. All right, let's start with Orlando Brown. There's been a lot of updates on him recently. We've got another one because he finally hired an agent uh, on Thursday, which means contract negotiations should begin or resume fairly soon for Orlando Brown as he's in line for a long-term deal. And obviously, as I've uh, mentioned several times now, the Chiefs have until July 15th to sign Brown to that long-term deal because he is on the franchise tag, and if they don't come to an agreement by then, he will play 2022 on the franchise tag. I do not expect that to happen. Delta Sports Group released a statement. That's who he uh, uh, joined on with uh, the uh, agency there. Uh, Delta Sports Group is proud to officially announce the signing of Orlando Brown Jr. as its first NFL client. DSG will represent Orlando's interest in contract negotiations with NFL clubs and off-the-field marketing opportunities. During the hiring process, both sides formed a unique personal connection which will contribute to a successful relationship. Here's what Orlando Brown had to say, partially at least. These are partial parts of the statements. At this point in my life, I realized that my career is bigger than my next football contract. Michael Portner, founder of DSJ, stood out to me because we relate to each other on a personal level. They talked about their passion for you know, uh, diabetes studies and a couple of other things as well. So they, they seem to hit it off. Portner gonna represent him. So there you go, he's got an agent. The only question that remains is how much Orlando Brown is going to get annually. Um, it's got to be a lot of money. We all know that. We've known that since the Chiefs traded for him. And when he uh, put together a good season last year after a bit of a slow start, adjusting to a different scheme, play really well. He's a left tackle. He's going to make a lot of money. Highest paid tackles in football, Trent Williams and David Bakhtiari at $23 million there. Laramie Tunsil at 22, and then it jumps down to just below 20. Ronnie Stanley and Ryan Ramchek. Ramchek the lone right tackle on this list. But you look at this, I don't think he'll get Trent Williams or Bakhtiari money. When those guys are healthy, they're the best tackles in football. Maybe he gets the Laramie Tunsil 22 per year. I kind of think 21 is a sweet spot for him because he's not the best left tackle in football. Now, he might get highest paid money, but Trent Williams is going to the Hall of Fame. Orlando Brown's got a long way to go before that. So we'll see. So I'm going to set the over-under at $21 million per year. Type O for over, U for under. How much do you think Orlando Brown will get on his new deal? Go ahead and let us know down in the comments section. Speaking of money, you want to protect yours, right? You can do so with Aura, who provides financial fraud protection. They're going to send you real-time alerts if there's suspicious credit inquiries or bizarre purchases that pop up on your online banking. That's what I do every night. Check my banking, make sure there's nothing suspicious. Well, now I don't have to do it as often because Aura does it for me. They monitor all your finances. They also have identity theft protection, full online and device security. They're going to keep your password safe, your social media, your email, Amazon accounts. You do your shopping online, all that good stuff. Plus, they even have family plans for up to five people. And I told you guys at the top of the show, 14-day free trial. It's free. Why not give it a shot? If you don't like it, you can cancel it. No big deal. I've already gotten a lot of feedback from you guys, though, that do like it. And, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a very good product. And it just kind of gives you that ease, right? I've had my Twitter hacked before. I've had to get new debit and credit cards because hackers are out there. Billions of uh, cases of hacking last year. Don't get hacked. Stay safe. Aura.com slash chat sports. It's just going to give you that ease at mind. Try that 14-day free trial. Link in the comments and in the description. All right, let's get into the dramatic portion of the show, and that is Tyreek Hill. Is he upset with the Chiefs? Maybe, maybe not. We're going to find out on June 10th because he's dropping a podcast with his agent Drew Rosenhaus and a co-host. Now, they released a trailer. If you haven't seen it, just Google Tyreek Kill podcast trailer. It'll pop up right away. And at the end of the trailer, they leave a cliffhanger where the co-host, who I'm, his name's blanking on me. I've never heard of him before, co-hosting it with Tyreek. Uh, basically asked slash in, uh, inferred to him, like, were the Chiefs suppressing you in the offense last year, kind of limiting you, uh, your production to try and get a cheaper contract this offseason? And before Tyreek answers, it cuts off. Classic cliffhanger. They want you to tune in on June 10th, which, hey, I will. I'm going to see what he has to say. 
I'll say this. If on the podcast he claims, if he agrees with what that co-host said, that he was suppressed in the offense last year, it's ridiculous. There is no data that suggests that is the case. Proof right here, right on your screen. Last year, Tyreek Hill was targeted 159 times, the most in his career. He had 111 uh, receptions, the most in his career. Next closest, 87. That's not even close. Yards, 1239. That was third. It was like 30 yards less than his second most. Last year, he had 1,400-something. Uh, but remember, safeties were playing too deep. He didn't hit as many of those deep balls because defenses simply would not allow it. They were lining 30 yards up off the line of scrimmage. Touchdowns, nine, third in his career. Sure, he had 15 the year before, but that's going to that's gonna fluctuate. Uh, average was fifth. That was second worst in his career. But again, it was a lot of underneath stuff because teams weren't giving up the deep ball a year ago. But to suggest, uh, if he does, that he wasn't utilized in a major way, it's, it's just not true. He was a focal point last year, just as Travis Kelsey was, as those two have been together the last three or four years, if not five or six. Uh, it's ridiculous if he comes out and says, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think they used me properly. Dude, it was a great partnership uh, for the Chiefs and for you as well. They, hey, man, your partnership with Kansas City got you the bag, and good for you. I think his focus should be on working with Tua and seeing how it works in Miami. We'll see what he says. I don't want to, you know, I can't think of the phrase, but uh, of the phrase, but I don't want to, you know, jump to conclusions of what he's going to say. But the trailer, you know, it kind of hints that he's going to suggest something along those lines. We'll see June 10th it, dro uh, it drops. But just remember, if you hear him say that, remember this video. The stats speak for themselves. He was utilized heavily and in some areas more than he's ever been in his entire career this past season. Hit that subscribe button because we keep it real. We tell you the facts. We have the latest news and rumors, trade coverage, free agency, and more videos as well all year long. Football season just over three uh, months away. By the way, 100-day countdown. 100 days from today is week one for the Kansas City Chiefs. Subscribe. It's free, and we'll have you guys covered leading up to week one. More on Tyreek Hill. He actually said this in the trailer as well. He said, I wanted to be in Casey. Drew Rosen now starts talking, hey, we you know, had a deal uh, almost in place, this and that, yada, yada, yada. I can't wait to see what the full podcast says. But, you know, is Hill like – has he gotten through a couple of weeks of OTAs and like, oh, man, Tua, Tua ain't – he ain't Mahomes. I, I wish I was still in KC. I wish I would have gotten top dollar there. You could have stayed in KC. The Chiefs wanted to keep Tyreek Hill. Make no mistake. You know what the reality is? When Christian Kirk got four years and $84 million and Devontae Adams got $28 million per year, that changed things. I think the Chiefs had a deal, $24, $25 million per year, and then when those contracts happened, they didn't budge. They weren't going to go up to 30 and Tyreek said, okay, I can get it from somewhere else, and he did, and good for him. The Chiefs basically banked on Patrick Mahomes uh, being able to make up that uh, production elsewhere and to save $30 million per year. I think you could have gone either way. I didn't love the trade at the time, but the reality is, is it's over. The Chiefs have moved on. It doesn't sound like Tyreek has. That, that's the thing here. So it's going to be fascinating to see how uh, this plays out, to see what the podcast says, and, of course, over the next couple of years to see how Tyreek plays and how Mahomes and the Chiefs fare without him. All right, have you moved on? Because I have. It took, I'll be honest, it took me a couple weeks. Uh, I did not like the trade at first, but moving forward, uh, you got Sky Moore in the fold. You got all these guys, Juju, Hardman. Uh, you got to roll with what you got. Uh, I don't know if Tyreek's moved on, but I know I have. Let me know what you guys think uh, or how you guys feel. Have you moved on? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Uh, curious to see where you weigh in in the comments. All right, we'll wrap things up on some news around Patrick Mahomes. I had a video, I think uh, last summer, last fall, that Patrick Mahomes was going to plant or uh, help open like 30 plus Whataburgers in the Kansas City area. First one opens next week, and uh, here's what Mahomes had to say as part of KMO Burger. I'm excited our team is opening our first location in Kansas City. It's great to bring a gift from my first home to my second home. And for those of you in the greater Kansas City area, it's going to open on uh, at 10780 Parallel Parkway in Kansas City, Kansas. So on the Kansas side of the Kansas City border there. If you want to go check it out, it opens next week as uh, Mahomes uh, continues to get involved in business endeavors in the Kansas City area. By the way, do you like Whataburger? Type L for like, D for dislike. I'm a big fan. It's huge down here in Texas, which is where we are based. Uh, I love Whataburger. It's uh, one of my favorite fast food joints. But I want to know how you guys feel. If you haven't had it, say haven't tried yet, but I will when it opens. That works as an answer as well. 
All right, that's going to do it for today's Chiefs Report. Remember, like the video because in the month of June, it's a challenge for most likes here at Chat Sports. Let's beat the Raiders. Let's beat uh, every other channel here at Chat Sports. So hit that thumbs up icon, and we'll see you next time.